all the lava flows on the Comenes are formed from a viscous rhyodacite magma and form these thick flows that are covered in a jumble of blocks. This one was erupted in 1940 and only traveled a couple of hundred meters from its vent before it came to a stop. That means we don't have to go very far to look at the craters. But even on a hot day like this, it can mean a bit of effort. For the tourists on the obligatory boat trip to the Khomeini's, it's a race to the top where the youngest craters lie. The interval between eruptions has ranged from two to 844 years, so that no pattern exists for making long-term predictions of when the next eruption is likely. As at other volcanoes, the longer periods of quiescence seem to precede the more energetic outbursts, although none have been particularly violent yet. Well, the last eruption in Santorini took place in 1950, and each of the different eruptions on Neokomeni has been erupted through a small vent which lies below little craters such as this one. If we look at the distribution of those craters, we can see that they define a northeast-southwest alignment. That's very similar to the trend we've seen in the dikes exposed in the Caldera Wall. Well, this is the uh, blocky front of the uh, youngest lava flow erupted from uh, Neokameni. And although uh, I'm standing on what appears to be older volcanic rocks, we can deduce that uh, all of the rocks around here are underlain at fairly shallow depth by hot volcanic material. And the thing that provides a clue about this is the existence of these uh, small uh, cavities through which we're getting hot sulfurous steam depositing beautiful crystals of prismatic sulfur. And these are what we term fumaroles. Nearby is another kind of fumarole, which required a little ingenuity to get to. Swimming along here, the water is quite warm. It's very pleasant. But I've just put my feet down to some gelatinous gunk. It feels horrible. The proximity of hot lava causes water to circulate just as a hot element stimulates water circulation in a kettle. This circulating water leaches iron from the lava and brings it to the surface, where it is precipitated as an iron-rich mud. A process aided by bacteria which thrive in these warm waters. Just as water degasses when it boils, so this hydrothermal system degasses as well. The nearby drilling operation has already produced cores 200 metres below sea level into the lava pile. The final target is 500 metres. The purpose of this project is to find out the detailed chemistry by which the metals are concentrated and extracted by the hydrothermal system. But to discover the magmatic processes occurring at greater depth within the volcano, we rely on the composition of the erupted rocks. The white Minoan pumice is a rhyodacite, and this magma must have been stored in a sizable chamber prior to collapse of the caldera. Darker andesite scoria can also be found in the Minoan layers if you search hard enough, and implies that this eruption came from a compositionally zoned chamber, which contained both acidic and intermediate magmas. Other eruptions have produced basalt lava, 